Hello there, Homeschool Nolan here, here to help you navigate learning in the digital age. In a previous video, I talked about the importance of studying computer science and how understanding CS can give you an edge over others who merely learn how to code. Now, the simplest path to studying computer science is, of course, majoring in computer science in college. But maybe you're like me, who really didn't get into computer science until after college. Or maybe you're a homeschooler or a high schooler who wants to get a head start in the field. If so, today I'd like to offer some thoughts based on my 20 plus years of experience in the tech industry on how to study computer science as a non-CS major. First, let's review the definition of computer science. Encyclopedia Britannica defines CS as the study of computers and computing including their theoretical and algorithmic foundations, hardware and software, and their uses for processing information. As you can see, computer science itself is a very broad subject, covering many other broad topics. There are many types of algorithms out there, as well as many types of hardware and software that you can study. But underlying all of this is mathematics. Yes, mathematics. If you want to be good with computers, I recommend you first get a solid foundation in mathematics. There's a high correlation between people who are good at math and people who are good at computers and programming. The early pioneers of computing, men like Alan Turing and John von Neumann, were all mathematical geniuses. Bill Gates was a math major at Harvard before he dropped out to start Microsoft. There's a strong correlation between math and computing because computers solve problems that are mathematical in nature. For example, take navigation systems, a type of computer software that we're all familiar with. Navigation systems work by using a mathematical model called a graph to model cities and roads as vertices and edges. It then uses math to calculate the shortest or best path between any two points. Now, mathematics itself is also a very broad subject, but there are two branches of math that all computer scientists should be pretty good at, and they are binary arithmetic and discrete mathematics. Binary arithmetic is, of course, about doing arithmetic on binary numbers, which is what computers do. You don't have to be a math genius to notice that numbers that are powers of two, such as 32, 64, 128, and 256 come up over and over again in computing. I found that it's very helpful if you can actually do a lot of this binary math in your head when solving problems with a computer. In addition to binary arithmetic, every computer scientist should also be pretty good at discrete mathematics. Now, discrete math is a class you probably didn't take in high school, but CS major majors do study it in college. At a high level, discrete math is about studying discrete or non-continuous mathematical structures. Instead of dealing with smooth curves like in calculus, it deals with finite separate numbers and values. And because computers operate in discrete steps using binary numbers, discrete math and CS go hand in hand. Discrete math includes concepts that every computer scientist is familiar with. Concepts like graph theory, Boolean algebra, logic, proofs, and matrices. All are tools that the computer scientist can use to solve problems on a computer. Once you have a solid foundation in math, the next subject I recommend studying is computer architecture and organization. Computer architecture is about how different hardware components like CPU, memory, and storage are all interconnected. Computer organization is considered a subset of computer architecture and is more about how a given architecture is actually implemented. Now, I got my first exposure to computer architecture way back in the seventh grade when my teacher opened up an Apple II and showed us the CPU and memory chips on the motherboard. Computers, of course, become much faster and more powerful since then. 
but the fundamentals of computer architecture and organization are still the same. In fact, all computers today still pretty much use the same von Neumann architecture first described by John von Neumann in 1945. Once you have a foundation in math and an understanding of how computer hardware components are interconnected, you will then be better equipped to understand how to build different types of software or programs to run top of it all to do interesting things. Important software topics that most CS majors take include data structures and algorithms, operating systems, compilers, and graphics. Newer, more exciting topics include artificial intelligence, virtual reality, and game development. But before diving into the more exciting topics, I recommend mastering fundamentals first, starting with data structures and algorithms. Basic data structures such as arrays, stacks, and linked lists will pop up over and over again no matter what branch of software you go into, as will operations such as hashing, sorting, and building trees. And when you're ready to put these data structures and algorithms to good use, I recommend challenging yourself by learning a more difficult lower level programming language such as C first, as opposed to a higher level language such as Python. I understand that most kids and even adults today start out learning with a higher level programming language because they're easier to learn and yet they still enable them to get their feet wet with coding and computer science in general. But if you want to have an edge over the competition, challenge yourself by learning a lower level or more difficult language first. Languages such as C require you to have some understanding of the underlying computer architecture, particularly when it comes to memory. They require you to know how to manage your hardware resources wisely. The higher level languages handle tasks such as memory management and other lower level tasks for you. So then you can focus on solving a particular real life problem. Now there's nothing wrong, of course, with using a higher level language to solve a problem. In fact, one should always use the best tool available. But if your goal is to learn computer science as opposed to building a particular application, then I think learning a lower level programming language first will pay off more in the long run. Once you master a lower level language such as C or even assembly, you will find that learning the higher level language such as Java and Python will be even easier. Trying to learn programming in the other direction from high level to lower level is much harder. So how do you actually learn all this stuff if you're not a CS major in college? So far, I've listed some topics to study, but how do you actually go about learning these topics on your own? Fortunately, computer science is perhaps the easiest field to study on your own thanks to the digital age. There's now an abundance of online classes, videos, and websites teaching computer science. Many colleges and universities, including names like MIT and Stanford, also post their lectures online for free. And while it can be challenging sometimes to filter through all this and find the right one, the abundance of choices also makes it easier to switch to another teacher or course if one isn't working out for you. And if you're old school like me, you can always turn to old-fashioned books like this one, Computer Organization and Design by Patterson and Hennessy. This book is considered a computer science classic and is used at many colleges. Whether it's books or videos, everyone has their own preferred learning style. And the digital age now gives all of us an unlimited choice of teachers when it comes to computer science. That said, Need I remind you, computer science is a very challenging and difficult subject to master, no matter what teachers, books, or videos you have at your disposal. If you want to make it, you still have to persevere and not give up easily when a concept seems too difficult to understand or a program too difficult to code. But if you do persevere, you'll be on your way to a very promising and lucrative career and you'll be just as competitive as those who did graduate from college with a CS degree. And I hope this has been helpful as you begin your journey as a computer scientist. Let me know what you think in the comments below. 
And don't forget to click subscribe for more videos like this one. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.